The last time I made a gaming-centric video, it was about Forspoken, a game that we here on the channel know pretty intimately. Forspoken is a bad game. There's no two ways about it. We gave it a 4 out of 10 because while the magic system and the open world parkouring showed a lot of promise, the rest of the game was just awful. They could have packaged a completely different, better game around that core. And while the topic of today's video, Hogwarts Legacy, is also a third-person, magic-based fantasy land adventure, I haven't actually played it yet. Yeah, tons of people are online right now enjoying the game and sharing their experiences, but that's because one of the perks of buying the Deluxe Edition is that it comes out on February 7th, while Standard Edition plebs like me have to wait until the 10th. That's okay though. By all accounts, the game seems to be not amazing, but not bad. Third person, over the shoulder, shooting spells and deflecting in shields, all the stuff you'd expect to see. The people who have played the game reported to have a couple of oddities in how certain things function, but overall it's a very serviceable game. It doesn't break the mold, but it also isn't in any way bad. If not for the Hogwarts name, it would probably be considered very average. Unlike with Forspoken, where a huge chunk of the story surrounding that game came from just how fucking broken it was, and the political aspect was clearly just a distraction from the game's terrible quality, the story of Hogwarts Legacy has almost nothing to do with the game itself. Instead, it has to do with this woman, J.K. Rowling. Now, we all know who J.K. Rowling is. I made a video about her years ago, in fact. Author of Harry Potter, and that's it. Her other work isn't really that good. It just seems like she was in the right time, right place to become a phenomenon in the 90s and 2000s. And it's not hard to see how. Harry Potter is a coming-of-age story. The boarding school environment always serves as a good fish-out-of-water location, and the magic puts it over the top. It's a hero's journey. The villain is a foil for the protagonist. It's a grand epic quest to save the world. It hits all the marks. There's nothing intrinsic to the setting of Hogwarts, or the wizarding world itself, as fantastical as it is, that draws people in. It's the adventure that really counts. The rest of it is window dressing. I think that's the main reason nobody cares about the Fantastic Beasts movies. They're all window dressing. However, relevant to this conversation is the fact that J.K. Rowling is a TERF, a trans-exclusionary radical feminist. TERFs are a component of the left that believe that trans women are not women and do not have a place in female-only spaces. This puts them at odds with trans activists and gender abolitionists, two other components of the left that fight for trans equality and want to abolish the concept of men and women respectively. In my recent Christmas video about Merry Turfmas, a phrase Rowling made go viral over the holidays, I went into a bit more detail. The TLDR is that J.K. Rowling is most certainly a radical feminist. Her political activism revolves around women's liberation and attacking the patriarchy, specifically from a point of view that is strictly biologically female-centric, and for a long time she was the left's darling. Within the past decade, however, her brand of leftism has declined in favor of trans activism, specifically as intersectionalists have begun to see white women not as the victimized oppressed, but as entitled oppressors themselves. So for a while, this put a lot of the rank-and-file lefties in a bind. We all remember those 2016 protests against Donald Trump's then-new presidency were like, right? Leftoids comparing themselves to Dumbledore's army and Trump to Voldemort, with the rest of us telling them to read another fucking book? Old memes, good times. When it comes to storytelling, leftists tend to claim rebellions against a corrupt tyrannical order. Harry Potter and Star Wars immediately come to mind, because those stories map onto revolutionary politics pretty well. They attempt to claim stories where they are the institutional power, like Star Trek or Mass Effect, but those ones don't quite fit. And you can often find some leftoids decrying the lionization of those heroes because they're part of the system. And of course, their attempts to colonize stories where they clearly don't belong just seem petty and ridiculous. The point is, though, for the left-leaning, terminally online culture warrior, Harry Potter was one of their go-to references for years. But now that the political winds have shifted, that's over. I mentioned in my White Nervosa video that the attempt to make Harry Potter owned by the fans, instead of by J.K. Rowling because of her political views, mirrors the attempt to delegitimize Scott Cawthon's creation of Five Nights at Freddy's. Not that it matters, though, because J.K. Rowling's still getting a big fat check every month. I remember seeing the trailer for Hogwarts Legacy like a year ago and remarking on stream that the trans activists were going to try to boycott the game. This is mainly because they were actually successful at boycotting the Fantastic Beasts movies, or at least they think they were. Personally, I think the main reason those movies failed is because they suck. But to the trans activists, it probably appears like their boycott was a success. So now it was time to go after Hogwarts Legacy. However, I never thought it would blow up this big, though. I don't think we need to go over every single tweet on this topic. Lots of other people have done that already. If you want to pause and read these moronic takes, be my guest. But they're all saying the same basic thing, and I would rather analyze it a little bit. Here's their logic. If you buy Hogwarts Legacy, you're killing trans people. 
Why? Because JK Rowling gets even more money from the game's success, which she will turn around and use to fund her turf activism. And because turf activism specifically excludes trans women, when JK Rowling decides to do activism with her money, like for example, opening a female only domestic violence shelter, that is a facility that won't help trans women, meaning there's less resources available to trans women than there could be if the shelter included them, which means that trans women are now at a higher risk than they would have been, meaning that they're more likely to be stuck in a domestic violence situation, have to endure abuse, and be driven to drug use, prostitution, and suicide. The problem with this example is that it presupposes that trans women have a right to JK Rowling's activist money. And because JK Rowling refuses to give it to them, that's the same thing as directly killing trans women. And if you give JK Rowling money by buying this game, you're killing them too. It's part of the wider logic that the existence of billionaires kills the poor because the billionaires could be using their wealth to help them, and they don't. And so, if you support the billionaires through voluntary trade, you are part of the problem. This is where the phrase, no ethical consumption under capitalism comes from. Because if you engage with the system, you uphold it, whether you want to or not. Now, this idea is what lies beneath a lot of the pro-theft, pro-looting, pro-rioting ethics on the left. But it's hilarious to see people who sell a product say this phrase, since it implies you should have just stolen it from them. There's many examples of this. But to stay on topic, Emma Watson promoted a clothing line with the phrase, this is what a feminist looks like printed on them. But it turns out the shirts were being made with sweatshop labor, and the woman who made them earned a dollar an hour and slept 16 people to one bedroom. Karl Marx said at one point that if given the chance, capitalism will commodify the revolution, and in doing so, reroute revolutionary tendencies away from real change and towards purely symbolic efforts, like spending $25 on a Che Guevara or a feminist shirt, and feeling like your praxis for the day is complete while the systems of oppression remain in place. The problem with this point of view is that it goes directly against another commonly stated leftist viewpoint, often encapsulated by this comic, where the serf is suffering under the current system and a smarmy internet asshole tells him he's being hypocritical for participating in the system, when he has to in order to survive. Cue the Vosh clip of him saying that socialists maximizing their wealth under capitalism is good. I don't think there's anything wrong with an individual maximizing their outcomes within an unethical system like capitalism, especially if they're a socialist, because it increases the likelihood that they'll be able to achieve political and economic power. On the one hand, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. All of your engagement with the system props it up, even if you are spreading an anti-capitalist message. And so if you're going to oppose the system, you must do so with violence, not with collaboration. This is the Sorelian socialist view on violence. The Leninists also somewhat believe in this, though with a few caveats. Lenin thought that exploiting capitalist consumption to directly further the revolution was a good deal, famously saying, the last capitalist will sell us the rope that we hang him with. On the other hand, there is the idea that socialists maximizing their wealth and power within capitalism will give them a better position when the revolution comes. This is the Gramscian view, where socialists have a moral obligation to infiltrate liberal institutions, and once firmly entrenched, begin to use that institution's power to tilt the world more leftward. Movements like feminism, racial activism, and the like serve to destabilize liberal sensibilities, making these institutions more vulnerable. Of course, no online leftoid has ever read George Sorrell or Vladimir Lenin or Antonio Gramsci. They have no idea that these two views, that there's no ethical consumption under capitalism, and that people should engage with liberal institutions to subvert them, are mutually exclusive in practice. But they don't care, because at the bottom of it is just hypocrisy. They want you to not buy Hogwarts Legacy because of a transphobia, and you're part of the problem if you refuse. However, even as they hate Jeff Bezos and Amazon's monopoly on everything, they still use Amazon Prime for that sweet two-day shipping. They still watch Twitch because their favorite lefty still streams there, and they still enjoy The Boys on Prime Video for its subversive deconstruction of Americanism. They still shill for games like Overwatch or Valorant, made by companies that support absolutely terrible regimes overseas involved in the suppression of racial, religious, and sexual minorities. They're still addicted to Twitter, where their constant use supports one of the people they hate the most, Elon Musk. They still use a phone built by child slave labor that the government uses to track their every location, unless they've got a fair phone like I do. All of these people screeching about Harry Potter and no ethical consumption are literally unethically consuming under capitalism themselves, with the excuse that they have to do it. But you guys need a new iPhone or Amazon Prime just as much as the rest of us needs Hogwarts Legacy. The fact of the matter is, you do it because you want to do it, because it's convenient, because it's cheap. That's the material analysis. The reply of, you need a phone, you don't need Hogwarts Legacy, is stupid, because that doesn't make the phone more ethically made. Again, unless it's a fair phone. If there's anything I've learned from environmental activists, it's that your needs do not make your consumption ethical, and that leaving your needs unfulfilled is the only moral choice. But even then, the environmental activists tend to excuse massive amounts of waste in the service of their cause while demanding that you turn off the gas. All of this is rooted in hypocrisy. They don't want to stop exploitation, they just want to be the ones doing the exploiting. Of course, I'm speaking about this entire topic within the left's moral framework. Personally, I don't give a shit. 
I don't think any of this is exploitative or immoral. I'm a capitalist. Play the game. Have fun. It's not your responsibility what other people do with your money after it's changed hands, any more than it is their responsibility what you do with their product after you own it. And most of the normies agree with me, because the push to boycott Hogwarts Legacy absolutely backfired. Calls for streamers to not cover the game, for players not to play it, for the whole thing to just silently go away, it all fell on deaf ears. Hogwarts Legacy peaked at 1.3 million viewers on Twitch, the highest view count for any single player game on the service. Twitch, the capitalist collaborationists that they are, partnered with Portkey Games to allow viewers to get items in their own game for watching streamers play it, as long as they had their accounts linked up. The Hogwarts branded controller immediately sold out upon release. Hogwarts Legacy smashed sales records on PS5, Xbox, and Steam, with the Steam page being particularly hilarious. Trans activists try to slap the game with tags such as transphobia and genocide simulator, and gamers just leaned into it, turning the comment section into a shitposting battleground. The truth is, people don't care about leftist moral sensibilities anymore. They don't give a shit. They're tired of cancel culture. They're tired of being told what to do and say and think by moral busybodies. They threw off the chains of the religious dogmatic right, and now they're throwing off the chains of the woke oppressive left. Of course, the activists wailed and gnashed their teeth in response. How dare the gamer chuds not fall into line? It's always funny when this happens. I remember what it was like early in Gamergate, where the game journals and woke devs tried to spin consumer boycotts of their work as oppressive because it denied them resources. Now they're crying that their own boycott failed and that gamers are apparently twisting themselves into pretzels to justify their behavior. It's always about hypocrisy with these people. The funniest thing about their boycott is that it likely contributed to the game's success. Hogwarts is being talked about like Elden Ring was when that game launched, another title that progressives tried to boycott, that time with the smokescreen of accessibility, and Elden Ring's a way better game. Once the Hogwarts Legacy boycott failed, the trans activists turned their ire onto the streamers who dared ignore their commands. The first blow was struck with the website HaveTheyStreamedThatWizardGame.com, a site that you could plug any Twitch stream into and it would tell you if they played Hogwarts Legacy. This was built to be a simple boycott tool that the progs would use, but it was rapidly turned into a tool for people to find streamers playing the game. One of my mod's shit posts went viral, specifically because the trans activists initially took it to mean that she was one of them. The site was actually pretty stupid, because all it measured is if you changed the game setting on your stream to Hogwarts Legacy. You can change that setting without streaming the game, or you can stream the game without the setting, and the site wouldn't know. In the end, the site shut down after just a few days because everyone realized it was a fucking joke. After that failure, the trans activists moved on to harassing streamers for playing it. There's multiple viral clips of leftoids raiding streamers chat rooms to shit on them for daring to play the game. What is it? I don't need your opinion. Opinions are just like assholes. Everybody got one. And if you're the motherfucker that can't accept that, then you become the asshole. Are we clear? Go ahead, talk about it. I will ban you so fast, I don't give two fucks. This is my escape. This has always been my escape. It will continue to be my escape. Fuck right on off if you have a problem with me playing this game. I'm almost like thinking of just like either going offline or like, we're, I'm barely into the second combat here. And every time I look at chat, it's just the conversation is just like Maybe we can do like bothering a me. Right back. Like, a, like, a, like a little break or something. You can take a break if you want. I'll just stop talking and I'll just go fight and do the combat. Y'all done did it now. Harry Potter and anyone that plays it is a bigot. Well, you're just a weird person. And a bully. I'll tell you guys, to end this right now, if you go around telling people who bought this game simply for the enjoyment of playing the game no other reason, you're an asshole. Plain and simple. You are a fucking asshole. If you go around bothering people, you are a dick, you are an asshole. You are the scum that people walk in the street and want to pass by as quickly as possible. Let's be clear, streamers have a ban button and they should be using it. Crying over this sort of thing is kind of cringe. But at the same time, this is absolutely demented behavior. None of these people are actually viewers of the streamer in question. And even if they were, that doesn't give them control over the stream. The activists are literally just bullies of the exact same caliber they claim to oppose. When that tactic didn't work, the trans activists resorted to simply spoiling the game. I'm not going to read off the spoilers, but I am going to display them on screen. So if you're only listening to this in the background and don't want to be spoiled, you'll be alright. The prog's last ditch attempt to ruin everyone's fun was to simply post the end game twist all over social media. This doesn't stop streams, it doesn't make JK Rowling any poorer, this is just being spiteful. This is the person screaming, stop having fun. Okay, spoilers over, you can look back now. Now I'm pretty sure that Portkey Games knew the shit show was coming, and added in a trans character as token representation. It didn't work though, because the wokes ignored it, and the normies just saw her as being shoehorned in. 
Funnily enough, following in the J.K. Rowling tradition of having weird racialized names for all of her characters, the trans woman is named Serona Ryan, which a lot of trans activists took as a slap in the face. Get it? Sir? Serona? There's a deeper problem, though, with the call for trans representation. How do you know if a character's trans? If they're the ideal trans woman, then they're passing, they're stealthing, and you shouldn't know that they're trans, unless there's a sex scene with them. If they're not passing, if they look manly or they have a non-feminine voice, then they're viewed as an ugly caricature of a trans woman. The only way to make non-sexual, non-grotesque trans representation is to shoehorn in the fact that she's trans into dialogue, to have a cringy pronoun scene or some shit. There was also a smaller side controversy about anti-Semitism, where the progs believe that the goblins are meant to be Jewish because they're greedy, short, hook-nosed little creatures who love money. Listen, I don't see a Jewish person when I look at this picture. And if you do, you're probably the fucking racist here, not me. But to be honest, there's not much of a story here. However, it was funny seeing Vivian Wolf twisting herself into pretzels, explaining how goblins were Judeo-Bolsheviks, therefore making J.K. Rowling a Nazi, because the goblins don't believe in the concept of trade. That is a rabbit hole I'll have to cover another time, though. All of this stuff was used as justification for the boycott, but apparently none of it applied if you had the correct politics. Again, hypocrisy. As left-leaning game journos, bloggers, and content creators all had a field day talking about Hogwarts Legacy, earning clicks and money virtue signaling about how bad it is, how terrible you are if you play it. They are as much a part of the machine as everyone else is, as I am. The difference is, they're leftist, therefore they're allowed. Apparently you can engage in exploitative systems if your politics are correct. It is all hypocrisy. At the end of the day, Hogwarts Legacy appears to be a pretty good game. It's not a 10 out of 10 or anything, but certainly something you can pick up to get yourself through the dry spell of new releases that always plagues the first few months of the year. Most of the people talking about the game right now are doing so because of the controversy, the failed boycott, the activist screeching. The game itself doesn't actually warrant this much attention. And because I personally think that progressive morals and sensibilities are retarded, I'm going to be streaming Hogwarts Legacy right after this video comes out. So make sure you tune in, guys. Let's shit on the leftoids together. I'll see you there. I love you.